I'm going to read out the book of Revelation. A little bit strange for me because I'm not a good teacher of, Revela of the book of Revelation. I, I'm a revelatory teacher. But I, I've looked at the Revela book of Revelation for the years and, and you know, the studies that I've done. And quite honestly, not, could not make head or, or tail our sense out of it if it was only for one generation, one dispensation. And until the Lord showed me and said, there are, there are truths in the book of Revelation that apply to you now. They're not just for the future, otherwise it wouldn't be there, it wouldn't be applicable. So I started reading it like that and saw some amazing stuff, promises from the Lord. And one of the, one of the key messages, uh, one of the key messages in the book of Revelation <coughs> is he who overcomes. Secondly, not secondly in that way, but another most, a very important um, theme is he who has an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, I'm saying all that because we have a problem with this overcoming issue because a lot of, especially church people, are a bunch of liars. Hypocrites, quick to condemn others that they feel are doing things that are wrong, that are not really wrong. And yet covering their own sins. <clears throat> and, you know, one of the things I was told that if, if you don't overcome, completely overcome in your life, you're not going to get all these wonderful promises from God. I believe that overcoming is something that gradually takes place. In other words, um, let's say there are five things in your life that you cannot overcome. And you are overcoming. Okay. In other words, you're doing better than you've done before. You've overcome, let's say, smoking, for instance. It's a bad habit. You hear that, Eric? So when you overcome smoking and you go back to it, <laughs> it's like a dog going to his vomit. <laughs> okay, we're just doing it because one of our guys was smoking and he sort of fell back. It's okay. So what? If So what? We are real people, yeah. We don't live this high life of so extreme holiness that everybody else we look down upon. You and I relate because I'm sharing with you that if you've overcome just a degree, then you are overcoming. There's no way you'll overcome everything immediately. And be, let me tell you something. The biggest people to criticize are the mealy mouths. The people that criticize, they think this tongue can say what it likes about everybody else, and yet they are sinning as they're doing it. So, you, you know, we can measure it and say, well, you smoking and you drinking wine, you doing this, big mouth. What about you and your mealy mouth? That's what I'm talking about. And so while we're criticizing, we're, we're sinning. And, and, and specifically Pentecostal church people have that tendency. They feel they've overcome the major sins. They don't do this adultery. They're not, they're not gay. But they'll, they'll, then they will minimize what they're doing, feel that they qualify to be able to do this. What makes you think you qualify to pull somebody else down? I don't know where you got that from. The simple things in the Bible, the simple, simple things that really make you a Christian, we disobey. Don't judge. Love one another. Don't be quick to, 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 to speak evil. What about that, pal? Have you forgotten about that? Oh, well, those things, no. Those are as important as being drunk. And I don't get drunk. I, I'm not a drunkard, and I'm certainly not a glutton. And the biggest and the fattest people are the ones that go and criticize any little thing that I do. Why did you stop eating? Put a knife to your, to your throat, as the Bible says. And let's realize that gluttony is right next to drunkenness, which, thank God, I'm so happy that I'm free of those things. But I'll tell you what. Let's not categorize sin. And, and I'm dealing with an issue right now, because, and you see I'm fired up, because I'm so tired of hearing about little petty sins that people are watching out for me and saying, well, you do this, you do this, you don't dress like this, and so on and so on. And here I am trying to do something good for the kingdom. And I will continue. And by the way, in continuing, I'll enjoy my life. While you miserable, miserable people, I'm talking about you, you, my warriors, but these crit critics that, that are criticizing the mission that God sent me to, 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 to do in America, whether you like it or not, I'm doing it and I'm doing it well. And God is succeeding through me and he's having his way. Thank you, Lord. Now, I've had my say and let's move on. So what is this about overcoming? 
Did you overcome anything at all? Have you overcome anything in the past week? Yes, Kim, I, I managed not to tell somebody a story and I managed not to be a tale bearer. You overcame. Let's give you an example. I'll give you mine. I'll be an open book to you today. I heard somebody pull somebody else down and I was tempted to text that person and say, you know what, this person has just pulled you down. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, you know, if you don't cover your brother's offense or what you consider an offense, but you go and tell a tale, you are actually a divider. You're partaking in wickedness. So I, I held back and I said, I'm not going to do that then, even though I thought it was necessary for that person to know that. And God was very happy. Guess what? I overcame. If you, if you did that, you've overcome. I'm trying to show you what overcoming is. Doesn't mean you're going to overcome the whole deal in your life at once. And if you're telling people, preacher, that you have to, you're a liar because you haven't even overcome everything. What we've got to encourage people is to, to overcome bit by bit so that they're in a process of overcoming. Do you get what I'm saying? In other words, you, you know, let's say you, you're struggling with a certain thing and, you, and you've got another thing that you're struggling with. Over, start overcoming one. Don't try and do everything at once. Now, God's Spirit will give you the power to overcome most of them. But there are things that will hold on. And I'm just being real with you today. The whole, just keep fighting you going to overcome in the end. Now, there's an incentive. The incentive is not, worry, it is not that you'll get to heaven if you overcome. You get to heaven based on one thing, and that is the precious blood of Jesus Christ who cleansed you from all of your sin and your confession that He is Lord and He is risen from the dead. That's what gets you to heaven. Okay? So, what about overcoming then? Uh, then, Kim. Okay. Overcoming in this life is, is a good feeling for you. It, it benefits you physically. It benefits you spiritually. Um, you know, the Bible speaks about fornication. And basically what, 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 uh, what Paul says is that if you don't overcome fornication, he doesn't speak about you going to hell or anything. He says it will affect your physical body. In other words, it has its, its, the, the downside to it besides not feeling good about it. It has, its, it has effects on your life. So what I'm saying is overcoming tends to give you a longer life. And it gives you joy. Overcoming gives you peace. So that should be the incentive. What does Revelation chapter 2 verse 7 say? It says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Stop right there. That's where most people fall down. Because they're not hearing what the Spirit says, is saying to the church. They know what He said, but what is He saying today to the church? Because what He says will give you the power to overcome. Not only what He said. God speaks today. And when He reveals Himself, the power of sin does not have its, the same status as it has had in the absence of revelation. So when God speaks and revelation knowledge is there, what happens at that point is that you over, you have the power to overcome. As I've said before in my teaching, especially in my teachings at the School of the Prophet on revelation, in the, in the presence of revelation, sin does not have the same status as it does in the absence of revelation. So when God is revealing himself, what comes with revelation? God's presence. What comes with God's presence? What comes with God's presence is fullness of joy. What else comes with God's presence? Your enemies melt as wax before the fire. So when God speaks, revelation is present. When revelation is present, God's presence is there and His presence arises and causes your enemies to scatter. Now, that's what I'm trying to say to you. <clears throat> so the whole deal about overcoming is hearing. Why am I saying this to you? Because my ministry is prophetic. I won't say I'm a prophet, so I won't offend the poor people that are getting uptight about it. So I'm prophetic. Can I say that? Oh, thank you so much. Okay, so now I'm prophetic. So what am I doing? I'm getting you to understand that daily you need to hear the voice of God. He speaks every day, not through prophets only, but He speaks to you by His Holy Spirit. So what I'm saying to you is that you have to have an ear to hear to overcome. 
Because God's presence is with revelation. To him who overcomes, he starts, I'll just start here. I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradiso of God. Listen to that just alone. I'm teaching you as I, I'm just flowing today. Okay, so I was reading Revelation and I was reading the book of Revelation and I was, I was saying, Lord, what do you want me to see? He said, look at overcoming. And I looked at all the scriptures about overcoming. And this made sense to me. Well, Kim, one day I'll, I'll be able to eat of the tree of life. Hold on now. Let's get back to the spiritual aspect of it. So you've got to wait till you die before you can eat of the tree of life. Well, that, there's a truth to that. But here's some more. While on this earth, you who overcome he will give to eat from the tree of life. Now, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Take the word paradiso, which is the, the, the Greek word for paradise. And let's, you can do a little study on it if you like. But not only is the physical place, but it is a spiritual place. Because Jesus spoke about the, the thief on the cross, the cross joining him in paradise. Then there was a shift, a paradigm shift. There was a shift that took place, and then Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will come, and he will come and give you dunamis power. And that dunamis power speaks about the life of God that comes to us when the Holy Spirit fills us, which means you have the paradiso and the kingdom of God, not over there or over there, but where? According to Jesus, they will say, is it over there? Is it over there? He said, no, it's not over there, but the kingdom of God is within you. Therefore, the paradise that I speak about before you get to heaven, before this earth is renewed and everything, is present right now. And so when I'm in my garden, I begin to, 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 to worship God. And do you know what I tell him? I don't tell him my sins, even though I do do that if I fall. Okay? Now, you, you fall, Kim? Absolutely. You put me on the, on the, on the, on, on the 405 highway, and I'll fall every minute. Just kidding with you, okay? You know what I'm saying. I get before God, and you know when I sin, uh, before you catch me and say, oh, look, he said, I do confess my sin if there is a sin that I've committed, which could be an attitude, could be anything. But when I come to God, once I've done that, I come to him proclaiming his deeds, not my needs. And what I do is I remind him of what, how, of what I've overcome. Wow, Kim, are you telling me that you, you're coming to God and reminding Him of your good works? I thought our good works are like filthy rags. Your self-righteousness, no. Let me explain something to you. You have the right to come before God and proclaim the good things that you've done. Not on the basis of your salvation, but on the basis of, By the way, Lord, I want to congratulate for the great job that you've done in me and the Spirit of God that came upon me. Guess what? I overcame yesterday. Do you remember what happened? I wanted that chocolate so bad. And I took it and I, and, I, I'm not, and I promised I wouldn't eat chocolate and I put it down. Hey, Lord, I just overcame. Okay, you can laugh at me and say, oh, that's stupid. Okay, let's get to a bigger thing. Get before God and proclaim to him and say, Lord, I want to remind you that you've done an incredible job with me. I've overcome an attitude. I was beginning to get, get hatred. I was getting very angry and hurt. And I reminded myself of 1 Corinthians 13. And guess what, Lord? I overcome. I overcame. Thank you for helping me to overcome. Okay. You, that's a good start for all of you watching me right now. But Kim, I've got other sins. I know. But I'm trying to tell you, and I've taught this before, when you come before him, Instead of speaking about your 10 sins, and you will confess them, yes, but then get to the place and say, by the way, aside from these that I'm struggling with, I want to proclaim to you some of the great things that you've done for me, how I've overcome. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because if you overcome and you go to God reminding him how you overcame just that one thing, guess what? You eat from the tree of Zoe. You eat from the tree of Zoe. <laughs> You eat from the tree of Zoe. Zoe, what is that for all of you great scholars? Zoe life. It's the life of God. I'm not going to teach on that today. How many of you would like to eat of the tree of Zoe, which is in the midst of the kingdom, the paradise of God, now and when you die one day of well? So, Kim, that's pushing it. Well, you can say that, but that's my interpretation of it. 
You can eat it or you can spit it out. I don't know. I like that thought that I can actually have that now because the Holy Spirit has come upon me. I've been baptized with the Spirit and I can eat of that tree of life, which means I have Zoe life. Now, remember something. That Zoe life is the life of God. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. How many of you have received that life? Okay, so let's move on now. Now we're learning a few little things. Chapter 2 of Revelation, verse 11. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. There it is again. Why does he keep saying that? Because that's the key. When you hear your pastor, when you hear a teacher, when the Spirit of God speaks to you, and you have an ear to hear, what does that mean? That means reasoning is not going to take over. You have a spiritual ear that hears. Are you with me? You have a natural ear that listens. But a spiritual ear that hears. And once you hear, faith comes by hearing. So he's telling you the key is to hear what the Spirit is presently saying to the church. We don't want a dead old sermon from way back there that has absolute no relevance unless there are principles in it that are applied to us in this day and life. So there he says it again. And then he says again, he who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. There was a little saying, I'm trying to remember it, that's why I'm looking at you like that. It goes like this. If you're born once, you die twice. If you're born twice, you die once. So you can put that in there because that's, that's so good. Just let me say it again. If you're born once, you die twice. There's a second death. In other words, you have a physical death and then you have another death, which is the, you know, the eternal damnation. If you're born twice, which means you're born by flesh, by your mother, Okay, and then you are born again, then you only die once. Isn't that great? I thought you'd love that. Okay, so what is overcoming is giving you all this stuff. He who has an ear, verse 17, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Again, he says the same thing. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. Doesn't that sound exciting? Hidden manna means the stuff that is is relevant for this day and age, spiritual manna. And it's hidden from everybody else. And you will get some of the hidden manna to eat. I love it. I think the book of Revelation is so exciting. If you read all these things, man, and, and he says, and I will give the one who overcomes. What I'm trying to get you to understand here today is that Revelation brings the power to overcome. Wow. By hearing what the Spirit is saying today to the church. Okay, you have for certain benefits that come to you by overcoming. Why am I doing this? Because preachers have got their whip out and they've gone out there and they've slain the people saying, if you sin, you will die in hell. You'll die and your flames will burn you and all this. It didn't work. In fact, this generation cannot wait to get to hell because they think it's a, it's, it's a place where no Christians are going to be and they'd rather go there than what they've seen in Christianity. That's a fact. You don't scare them with hell anymore, so stop doing it. It's not working. Oh, but Kim, you don't understand. Jesus spoke more about hell than he did heaven. Okay, so what does that mean? Did you remember something what Jesus did? He touched the leper. He didn't reject him. He touched him. He went to a woman that was about to be stoned. He didn't go and condemn her. She was going to hell. No, he looked at the ones that were actually sleeping with her and accusing her. The accuser is the one that went to hell, not her. My point being, stop trying to whip people into heaven. It's not going to work. It's all about love. His love drives me to heaven. You know, people criticize Joel Osteen. You're, you're, you're idiotic. I've been to his meetings. There are more people getting saved there than I've seen in any church I've been in. And they're truly getting saved. And these are true sinners. And he tells it like it is. Yes, I know he had a situation on, on Larry King where he, he didn't quite say it the way we all wanted him to say it. But believe me, my friend, he goes and gets the true sinner and he touches the untouchable and reaches the unreachable. So shut your mouth when it comes to speaking about Joel Osteen, whoever's done that. And I've heard a few. We're so quick to, to categorize people and put them in this, in, this, in this one category of what we believe should be the right way. Yours is one way, but God has many ways of presenting the word to people. 
through different personalities. He's colorful. He does it. He does it in all kinds of genres, and I love the way he does it. I was watching Charles Stanley. You know Charles Stanley is one an incredible guy. I was watching him teach once. And I, you know, I said to the Lord, now who would listen to this? And the Lord said, everyone who doesn't listen to you. So in other words, he, he's reaching somebody I would never reach. Let's be gracious, please. Church, it's disgusting how we tear down one another. I just refuse to do it. Jane and I have made our mind up and a decision that even in deepest hurt, we will not pull down another brother or sister. Unless it's some maniac that needs to be spoken about uh, or revealed, uh, you know, I will not do it. We refuse to do it. You know why? Because we watched our fathers in the faith do it. And it stank and we, it disgusted us. And I said to myself, I will never pull my sons down ever. My sons of the kingdom that are trying to do something. Yes, they may not do it my way, but they might be doing it Yahweh. Because your way is not always Yahweh. Got it? I don't think you've seen me so fired up in a long time. Yeah, i got some people really, really speaking ugly things to me. I have it a lot, you know, but sometimes we need to address these things. But, but I'm overcoming. Thank God I'm overcoming. I'm overcoming by not scandalizing them and responding. I, I would rather my, my silence be deafening. So, Again, we're talking about the white stone, uh, excuse me, the, the hidden manna. Then he goes on in the book of Revelation and says, I will give that person who overcomes a white stone. What I was saying was, you know, we had so many, I even did it when I was younger. You're going to burn in hell forever, hoping that they'd come to the cross. They'd come out of fear. They, they're so scared of hell. They'd leave that next day, two days later, they were back to doing what they did. What is the incentive to overcome? First of all, I want to hear from God. When I hear from God, I have His revelation, His presence. His presence changes the status of sin in my life. It no longer has such quite a stronghold. And guess what? I overcome. I overcome because I love Him. Not because I'm, a, I'm not going to go to hell. I overcome because I love Him and I have a good feeling. Even if we took God out of the equation, I have a good feeling when I overcome. That's all there is to it. And it's such a great feeling. To stand with a clean conscience. And, and let's, let's, let's talk about that for a while. Because what is the incentive to overcoming? Well, God gives you many. Some of the hidden manna to eat. Eating of the tree of life. I'll give him a white stone. And on that stone a new name written which no one knows except him who receives it. Abram. Because you've overcome, you are now Abraham. You're Abraham. And, and, he, and he gives him the new name father of many nations and so it is important that you understand that you have a spiritual name it, it, I spoke about it when it came to marriage it, in, the, in the old covenant of marriage the, the true covenant of marriage the woman would receive a new name and along with that new name would come all the inheritance of that name okay so what am I, what am I telling you today he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, him will I give power over the nations. Now, even though you, he's saying until the end, which means the end of time or the end of your life, if you overcome and keep God's works until the end, to him I'll give power over the nations. Now, I know that Fiona and many others teach, and I totally agree that this speaks about once we have been established uh, in heaven, there's a new earth and everything, they will give power over nations. But let's bring it into the now again, because if you understand this, you'll realize that this is also applicable today. Otherwise, it's a good thought that if I overcome and I keep his works until the end of my life and uh, that he will give me power of the nations. That's a great thought. But think about it today. God can give you power over the nations now as well. But you've got to overcome. How do you overcome? By obeying God's voice. Everybody write that down. I can overcome by obeying the voice of God. I can overcome by obeying the voice of God. Hearing what the Spirit is saying to the churches is the key. I'm not going to stop. 
I'm not going to stop teaching on that now because I'm wanting you to realize that hearing the voice of God is the key to overcoming. And I'll repeat it over and over because it's difficult to scandalize somebody else when God is around. It's difficult to do wrong when you know God's right next to you. The only reason people go on a rampage of sin, talk about other slander, is because the presence of God is, to them is not there. Why would they do it if they knew God was standing right in front of them? Your overcoming power, my darling, is the fact that you know that God is present because you're hearing Him speak. Look, when you're hearing God speak, you don't want to hear any other crap. I promise you. I want to just hear from Him. I don't want to hear all the bad reports. I, I don't want to hear. No, I'm not. I'm not sticking my head in the ground. I'm very aware of what's happening. But I don't want, well, I don't want even to have the slightest um, uh, sin in front of me. Yes, I will do wrong. Yes, sometimes I will make a mistake. But I'm not going to live my whole life saying sorry to God. That's a pretty sorry Christian. Oh, sorry God, sorry God, sorry God, sorry, sorry, sorry God, sorry God, sorry God. I'm very, 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 very sorry God. So I'm sorry that I don't know what to do. It's like God doesn't want that. He wants a relationship. You know, when my sons and I talk, and I'm just playing around here. Don't get upset with me. But you know, when my sons come to me, I don't want to hear about all the bad they've done. I want to hear some of the good. When Caleb comes from college, you know, he's not going to tell me, oh, Dad, I went down the street and I had... and you know what I got drunk he didn't but I'm just saying I don't hear that even though it may be necessary to discuss but I also want to hear some of the good stuff dad I just did a, a show it was fabulous we had 400 people dad can I play you some of the music that I, that I played there yeah I'd love to hear some that's a relationship you know what I find so sad never once have I ever looked at my son when he plays that music and got jealous of him. And I don't know how anybody else can do that to their own sons and daughters. It's shocking. When I hear my son playing, I sit with pride. When I hear about him winning a competition in another city with possibly even some other people, I don't say, well, who does he think he is winning a competition in San Francisco? But why would you say that? Why would anybody want to say that about their own? Has your son ever hurt you, Kim? Yes, of course. Does that mean I must reject him? I want to hear good things about Caleb, about Jacob, Donay, Jacqueline, Elizabeth, and my spiritual sons and daughters too. I want to hear them tell Now, if they want to confess something bad, it's okay. We'll go along with them. We'll work with them. It's time for confession, you know. It's time for confession now. I feel like I'm, I'm, you know, somebody wrote to me and said, would you teach out the book of Revelation? I said, absolutely not. Next thing I've got my nose stuck right in the middle of it, and God is speaking to me. And you know what I feel to say to you today? That God wants to see a good work. God wants to see a good work in you. He wants to he wants to bless you God wants you to do something good and bless him so what are you talking about you know what I'm saying think about for a minute you've done wrong then let's confess it. You've done wickedly. You've made a mistake. 
He's, let's just stop. What you're doing right now, you know, this is the moment that I, that God always will give me the time when it's time for us to bring our offering to Him. You can close that computer and say, well, you know what, I'm getting greatly taught, but I, no, you're going to be a partaker of what I've just spoken to you. You're going to be a partaker of this revelation. Because you see what happens with God. Every time you overcome and you do something, something good, something right, it sets God up to bless you. That's the whole deal. Now, I'll carry on teaching, but before I do, I'm gonna, first thing you're going to do is we're going to confess. We're not going to we're not going to sit around wailing and weeping and begging God over and over to, to forgive us. We're going we're gonna to confess now. All of you, put everything one side. I want you to confess with me. And then once you've confessed, we're going to pray a prayer. And then I'm going to give you the opportunity to do something good. By doing what? By obeying the, what the Spirit says. Now listen to me carefully. Let's do the first one, then we're going to go to the second degree, which is, can you hear what the Spirit is saying to you? Well, Kim, it says to the church, lift your hands and say, I am the church. First, we're going to confess. You're going to feel so good and so clean. And then you're going to pray and ask God to speak to us. And you that have an ear, I want you to hear what the Spirit says to you. As you obey Him, watch what happens. Now, no condemnation, but you need to confess. It's good for the soul. And as your soul prospers, so will you prosper. You ready? And pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the only one who can forgive me. I have sinned against you. I have wronged you. I have hurt you and others. And I ask your forgiveness. I confess that I've done wrong. And you may want to mention it right now. This sin is something I hate. I want to hate sin the way you do, Lord. Now, I ask your forgiveness. I accept it. Now I'm ready to overcome by hearing what the Spirit says to me. Amen. Now that is so beautiful. Don't you feel beautiful? Now think for a minute. You just got cleansed. You washed. You are washed clean by the washing of the water of the Word. I release that upon you now. Lord, the Word is present. I pray that there will be a cleansing by the washing of the water of the Word. That's beautiful now. Okay, all of you now. And there are possibly thousands of you. Many of you just close the computer when it's done and you leave to your shame. We are going to put into practice what we just lear learned. What is that? You are going to hear what the Spirit says to you. And you're going to bring an offering to the Lord right now. And when you do that, I'm praying that the power to overcome even more would come upon you and you'd, you'd partake of some of these glorious things that He's promised you. Don't come empty-handed. This is your moment to do something good and be obedient and allow the Spirit to come in and change everything for you. Now let's pray. All of you pray this prayer. Lord, I want to do something good. I want to overcome. I want you to speak to me, Holy Spirit. And show me what I should give in this offering. I will lay it on the altar and I pray it would be a sweet incense.
that you would bless my obedience. Speak to me now. There we go. Now, whatever you felt, I want you to do, there's a red link at the bottom there. It says, my special offering to God. I want you to go ahead and as you sow it, I want you to say to the Lord, this is my good work. Bless me now. I go ahead and give and I'll just, I'll just play while you're giving right now. Spirit has told them to do. Let this be the beginning of many things, Lord God. Let this be the beginning of many great works that they'll do because you don't take this lightly, Lord God. Bless us now, Lord. As they've given, Lord God, I pray, receive it as a good work. Amen.